Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. My name is Saiken and today we're continuing the Royal Rumble campaign where I'm trying to survive in a hostile environment, a legendary Iron Man campaign with 90 plus mods, most of which are just trying to eat yourself alive. Double enemy uh, squad size is potentially one of the most uh, dreading ones of uh, the whole bunch. We've had a mission just recently with uh, over 90 enemies. This is crazy numbers and I am very, very glad that uh, we finally upgraded some of our equipment. Today it is time for Operation Empty Spark, where we're hopefully getting a Grenadier and quite a bit of intel. So it's a VIP rescue mission against a few uh, likely robotic enemies. And I wanted to give some of the items that we have uh, in the meantime a try. Just wanted to let you really know what we have in store. So Dilly G here. I'm not going with the spider suit just because it has not, in a, uh, not enough hit points. If he ever gets caught out at the moment, it's just too dangerous, specifically in a city environment. Can't let that happen. So uh, he goes with a standard armor. Uh, Euler has uh, one of the rare looted items uh, that we have gotten the bio nanoscale vest i think that is from the bio faction that dropped this so we can't build it or anything but with our breakthrough of increasing uh, health and armor of all of uh, the armors it's actually quite good three armor and three health is nothing to scoff at and with four armor overall and almost 20 health He's uh, able to stand kind of at, at the front in high ground and use his death from above really efficiently. Inappropriate Murphy is back, still smoking uh, whilst on duty, uh, giving you kind of the twinky eye. And uh, always good for an inappropriate joke. Uh, but this time he brings something more inappropriate to the battlefield than ever, which are the first improved Viper rounds. I improved them the last time. Didn't fully understand it. I thought we can buy a build them, but no, no. It's just you need to have Viper rounds and then you can improve it. Essentially, it now deals two bonus damage, which is great, and extra damage uh, from poison. I would assume the poison damage is stronger than it normally would be. So I will give that a try and see how it works. Potentially not gain, uh, not against uh, robots but it uh, should work well against any biological targets. Mind shield, you know all of that. We got the spark with us. There is, however, one new item, which I haven't used so far at all, but we have looted a new one, and I figured I'd give you kind of the rundown. Uh, let me just sh uh, show you. The graphics are quite well done. You can see through it from one side, but from the other side, it's like super, super solid. It's kind of an energy shield, but uh, look at that. So basically the shield uh, does five to six damage um, in melee, which is one less uh, than the sword would do. Uh, has moderate critical damage, so that's not really great. Uh, the melee aim isn't perfect either, uh, but with uh, Blade Master it's um, okay. I think we can hit it. Now the cool part is you cannot only hit with the shield, but the shield also um, disorients uh, the enemy automatically. It gives you a couple of uh, um, uh, malices, minus one mobility, and an aim penalty of 10%, which for a shotgun is really not that much of a problem. We're oftentimes just getting uh, close to the enemy. The mobility piece, I'm still on the fence, not sure if that will bite us in the rear. We're going to see how it plays out. The cool part about the shield is, uh, if you look at uh, the middle section, it grants 14 points to the user and provides a low cover to adjacent uh, units. So he would effectively have 14 uh, temporary hit points more and uh, provides a shield wall, high, high cover to adjacent units. And they also receive a bonus to, um, uh, oh no, we, uh, we would uh, receive a minus 20 bonus to uh, getting hit. So effectively it's it's making us easier to be hit, but it provides full cover to adjacent units. So could be something when we're fighting in the open uh, where that comes in handy. Typically shield wall is not the greatest ability, but um, 
I want to give it a try and uh, see how it plays out. I was mainly intrigued by the 14 temporary hit points because the whole campaign here seems just like such an enormous meat grinder that anything that the game gives me in order to increase our hit points, I will gladly take that. Good, let's jump in and see how well we're doing. Fantastic, and we landed. So let's take a look. We got pretty long uh, winded way ahead of us. And some high cover in between. So large maps have a distinct advantage. One of potentially just running into a single pack instead of an entire uh, fleet of enemies. But they also do have a distinct disadvantage because you need to continuously move in order to still stay at the front line. And oftentimes that it is very difficult to get to the extraction zone if you're not really really fast go 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 by the way i love it how the game just forces you to lose concealment early tower here tower here and then in between they put civilians so that you cannot go through them <laughs> why not just let you start without concealment then i mean look at it our our movement passages here like this is too long you're losing too much time this car is exactly uh, uh, placed so that you would need to move around because you're not they are not jumping over cars here you would need to go through the window i suppose this might be the only way through uh, to actually go there and yet again the other side would take too much time lovely And sometimes you're just, you're simply getting revealed for no other reason than you were out of line of sight, but then the game decided, nope, that's not good enough. Yeah, let's position ourselves over here for good aiming angles. I'm hearing comet music which tells me someone or something is near. Alright, what are we talking about? I wanted to disable uh, one of the towers, but the game didn't even give me a chance. 73%, I like the run gun, that's a decent effect. Typically, both of the towers have a bit of a different chance. The one is 73. This one is 93. Thank you. I'll take that. Just getting that extra run gun. All right. And... Let's see what is going to happen. First things first, the Warlock appears. Okay, we haven't fought against him yet. Does not trigger Overwatch, that's bad. Can summon Advent Troopers, reveals all concealed units, is near immune to critical strikes, um, but gets uh, more damage when fought up close and hates Templars. So I think the Templar is the perfect counter to him. Mind shield uh, can stick on him. Unfortunately, the warlock in a better uh, chosen has been given the ability to go through mind shields, so that's a bit of a problem. Okay, nice. So the enemies weren't even bothering, they were directly just engaging with us.
Not even sure why, but okay. So that pack just also triggered itself. <laughs> it's okay. Yay, Hogbite. Go, Hogbite. Well, very good. I mean, the new double enemy uh, mm, uh, sizes plus uh, mm, yellow alert really are showing why it is a hardcore combination. Essentially, without me even having a chance to do anything here, we have been... We have been engaged upon. Oh, really? So the Pathfinder has return damage overwatch. Okay, cool. Well, we're leaving that out then. No, let's do this. That'll take away cover and get them to low ground. Okay, well, this is a bit of a problem. Good. At least the Overwatch is gone. Seven plus five, that's twelve. Uh, we could position ourselves here and... And hit that guy with the shotgun in the face. That's the other alternative. Um, basically getting rid of the trooper. Her trooper still has overwatch and I can't let that happen. So, let's remove that. Roby is the only one who ignores Overwatch. Oh boy, we missed that. Hmm. Good. Still trying to remove Overwatch, really. Okay, fantastic. At least that worked. So we're looking at what? 5 plus 2, that's 7. I think that's not good enough to kill him. No, not yet. Okay, good. Back to what I was saying. Good, we got death from above. Now, what else are we going to do? How are we getting both of uh, the max? Uh, 
I mean, look, we could hit them. That'll shred them nicely. And then we're shifting an ability over. It's not great, but I'm having a severe problem with our action economy here. Not enough things that I can do in order to get rid of everybody. So there is the teamwork. Still 17 hit points. Good, so that'll allow us to flank. Basically setting these guys up for kills. Twelve points of damage. I need to take chain shot in this case. I really want a dead. See? Well at least it died. Oh look at that. Death from above now triggers with chain shot as well. Alright. I'll just keep the grenade. But we're start they definitely starting with uh, softening up that Pathfinder. Half cover, half cover. Not much cover left over. Half cover is better than no cover. All right, luckily we got those 14 extra shield um, points. We need them now. Oh, we got to get back with our Mac. Okay, good old spectral zombies. There's a spectral rupture and two other zombies. Okay. Uh, the mech definitely needs the aid protocol. We 
we're moving a slight bit away. No, 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 yes. Come on. Oh, that was a nice hit. I still think the... I mean, the shield was great just to absorb pressure. I still think it that we will not use that because the loss of Blade Storm plus the mobility plus uh, the aim is a problem. Maybe in late game when we have more mobility for the time being. Not having that is an issue. Good, we need to reload. Somehow we can't hit the mech. What is wrong? Okay, apparently it's incredibly difficult to hit the mech. Couple of things. Let's get this here first for more damage. Secondly, let's get ready to tank this here. Thirdly, I would love to get a tiny bit back just so that we're not being spotted out. Two little hit points. There you go. Good, we still have death from above uh, overwatch if needed. Six points of damage, we're looking at seven, so that's by no means a secure kill. This is a 33% as well. Good, parry. And I think we're just going to soften him up uh, so that the overwatch from Euler can kill it. Better than a Spectre Rupture. Alright, so much for that. We're going to need to move because of Spectral Rupture. That's the one parry that I was uh, hoping for. Wow, we're wasting a lot of time here. We need to move, push forward. But we're also fighting against a lot of hit points. Next turn, this guy is going to blow up, and with him, the car and so on. So it's not a very nice situation. Reload for, uh, for full ammunition. Killing the robot and then 
basically moving on. Needing to get full focus. Good, so that very much uh, filled up Hogbite. Moving up over here. The spark is incredibly low, so I'll keep it semi to the back. Good high ground and. I think I'll just overwatch. Full reload. And moving up to the front line. Next up, we're taking the high ground and we're getting up on this rooftop. Next round, we're also going to see more of uh, the uh, spectral zombies, so gotta be aware of that. Okay, there is a way up here. Fine. Let's double check that there are no enemies. Okay, Hogbird scouted it out. I'm, I'm trusting you here. Which means we are going to charge forward. But of course, it was the one very small angle that we haven't had seen before. Begin reload sequence. I think these guys had close combats, uh, close quarters, so don't want to mess that up. Disorienting this guy, it's a good start. Well, okay. Might as well. Solve that, okay, good. We don't want to melee attack them. Not without necessary preparation. Oh, inappropriate Murphy. That was not what I was hoping for. These guys are down to four hit points. Which means... This here will be a kill, and the Archon hopefully does Blazing Pinions or something. Alternatively, he can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Hogbite, who is triggering another Advent Force. Mm. Who's going into a parry? He's just double move. Okay, I was about to say double moving doesn't seem like a typical Archon move.
Nice little parry. Let's try. Oh, and I forgot. It's time for Spectral Zombies. The number of hit points that we need to chew through and move on top of that is quite astonishing. All right, time to soften all of these guys up. Lightning hands into face off. I was thinking that this uh, spectral zombie actually would die. Apparently I have been wrong. Good, time to get that perch heavy out of the way. Thankfully, we do have tail and rounds. <laughs> he could have been the winner. Roby, you messed it up. Moving far, far away. Good, two down. Wow, that other spectral zombie didn't die. That is highly aggravating. Okay, I'll offer Hogbite as a target here. Inappropriate Murphy moves down. Could should have used run and gun and and uh, given the A protocol over. That was a mistake. Good, he's there. Getting as close to him as possible to reduce the distance. And then let's kill him. We're still standing, not in a good shape, but we're still standing.
Okay, so seven turns and we are still pretty far away. This is one of those situations where from time to time it makes sense to just go for mobility and try to be really quick and uh, get to the target. We know that there are the majority of this is been spotted out, so there aren't as many issues here. I will even use run and gun, mainly because I want uh, to get there really as fast as possible. Should have moved talk by first, lost a little bit of speed there. I'm using run and gun to reload. So talking shortly about reloading, many of um, many of the mistakes that I'm seeing when uh, looking at failed campaigns or game states where people send them in is that they are underestimating how important momentum is and what I mean with momentum is the ability to know how far ahead or behind the timer curve you really are and one easy way of doing that is uh, mm, you can see the amount of double moves that are required to get to the target, which is four. Having six turns, it's not really a lot. I'm um, counting, however, on an engagement with the Warlock, which then in return will help me to hopefully um, t uh, stop the timer for a couple of uh, rounds whilst we are engaging and moving forward. So momentum is really all about... Uh, how fast or how slow are you compared to what the mission actually asks you uh, to do and why that is important is because sometimes like i just did you even need to use cooldowns in order to gain momentum and make up time so of course the run and gun could have uh, come in incredibly handy at a later stage yet i chose to simply go with a normal movement um, with a double movement and a reload because I know that we're behind the curve so overwatch I think zombies uh, it's zombies time again that small um, movement blip shows us that there is a pack right beneath us so we should engage them And the warlock is over there. Okay. Well, fantastic. Overwatches were active, but unfortunately didn't do anything. On the bright side, the spectral rupture here will allow us to get down there. And have a line of vision into that room where we know that there is a pack. Explosion shouldn't take uh, take us um, away. Moving over here. We have something like quick draw. No. The Spectral Zombies, by the way, are a great example for anti-momentum because all they're doing is slow you down when you really don't want to fight them. Good, there we go. Full focus on Hogbite again. That's important. Of 
minimum damage, but luckily we can finish the guy. One more round, I think, of reloading and just getting ready. And next turn should be good to go. An appropriate Murphy takes a nice little full cover position there. Overwatches. Hogbite stands with him, can easily jump down next turn, reloading for Roby. And someone will lose their ammunition. Warlock will potentially sabotage the weapon. Or we're getting a line of sight. Wow. Nice. Sliv slither it up and immediately regretted it. No way. No. What? Oh, wow. Okay, cool. Thanks, yellow alert. Uh, you didn't have any actions, but... Apparently you also did not care. Okay, that is dangerous. Okay, time to... Clean uh, the house a little bit. And uh, what I mean with that is the mutant commander here needs to die. Roby jumps down. See you later, alligator. Very nice crit. Eight. No, that's not a kill yet. Emphasis on yet. All right, so next up. Time to kill the mech. Ten down to eight could be a slight crit. So I got like what? Uh, th mm, let's start with the mech because uh, that one is really the most annoying. Still has twelve hit points. Hitting the drone and now face off. Nice little hit.
Good, we're starting. Wait a second, we could. First of all, reload. We might fall down, but that is okay. It's less damage than getting completely annihilated by the others here. Let's get that commando. Alright. Fantastic. Oh! Chain shot triggers death from above. That is good. Because that also means... We got him covered, and I even freed up Hogbite to say thank you for killing Spark Primus. God damn it, he was so young, just just built and released. But you had to come in, and you had to you had to attack him. All right, more enemies. Sure, why not? These minions serve their purposes occasionally, just as yours do, Commander. This looks a little ugly. That is not a little ugly. This looks incredibly ugly. And Dilly G indeed fell down. Great, cool. I need to go and fight uh, the war warlock. Let's get as close as possible to the target. This mech also needs to die. Euler does such a good job. So much work. Alright, that's 100% kill. I need to go and confront the Warlock because we're running out of timer. We can't, we can't uh, move back. Um, it's pushed to the front, all or nothing now. I'm, I'm taking that stairs high ground. We need to get closer to the target. Good, Hogbite five. He needs five. I think we're going with Hogbite. Because he will need to fight the Warlock. And I know that the Warlock can bypass his Mind Shield. Alright. Nice. Yeah, stay right there. Look, 101, dude, 101. 1v1, one one, one one me, bro.
You're kidding me, right? <laughs> no! No! Alright, we have to deal with the Spectral Army now, I, I guess. How many Lancers? Two? Three. One, two, three, and I need to reload. All right, I'll stay in vision range of that elite gunslinger. This guy is not standing here. Well, maybe he is. I don't know. Maybe he is. Oh, he's not standing there either. Can't really hit anything. Jumping down wouldn't help either, not really. Thing is blocking here. That might be the fourth stun lancer. All right. Inappropriate Murphy needs to make sure that he's not being disabled because he can revive someone from unconsciousness. The others cannot. be able to kill all of them unfortunately certainly doesn't help if we do have a massive if we do have a massive miss that however could help Lots, uh, lots of them are disoriented now, meaning lower hit chances. There's the parry from the gunslinger.
I like it. That's a decent position because it's high ground and high ground. And we can jump out afterwards. Alright, that kills him. Then next up, moving right to here, that stun lancer needs to die. And that should free the warlock, yep, which it naturally did. And to shred him a little bit. Dilly G. Not good enough. I need that 100% shot. He's down to 8 hit points. And now it's a little bit spray and pray. Let's hope we kill him. Nope. Didn't happen. I don't want to deal with the gunslinger. Good, so it's only the warlock. And we need to get uh, the VIP out and keep the warlock busy. Whilst he is nicely teleporting around from A to B. Revive. You have come for your captive friend. Then how many lives will you sacrifice for theirs? Run down here. We want to free we want to free the VIP. Euler moves up. Can't really reach anyone there, but I could reach the loot. Which I will do. Next up. Going closer to the uh, to the extraction zone, scope isn't isn't a bad idea. Robbie, let's get you up. I don't want anyone uh, extracted by that bastard. Good. Next round. The uh, disorientation hopefully will wear off. Okay, that is a problem. Euler moves up. Uh, 
Can't believe that that missed. Carrying. Good, so let's position ourselves far enough away that Roby won't be able to to get us. Inappropriate Murphy is still very much disoriented, so let's hunker down. No way. Are you kidding me? Wow. This guy is... It's just not taking a break. At least the mind control is lost. But holy. Talking about really poor timing. Did he just open the door? All right, let's get out of here. I like it. Delays the dark events. Less dark events means we need to not deal with that many side projects. Isidra, Isidra. Open the door. Yes, please. Oh, there is an... Okay, there is another Spectral Lancer. Well, great. And we are back to our old position. All right, reload. And let's hit the... The guy, yep, good. Well, we got that 90% miss out of the system. good can't believe that we're still going hair trigger free action very good by the way I haven't just uh, quit the game it's not a rage quit or anything it just literally the game didn't like uh, how this was playing out let me fix it all right replayed everything this time however the shot uh, hits but it, since i don't want to fail on uh, on the integrity of the safe game we we uh, treated as if cannon shot would have uh, hit 
another 90% one. Uh, same damage, uh, it's fine. I'll just leave it as is. It's a bit unfortunate because I was hoping that the save game would be a bit more stable. Unfortunately, it is not. Good, so that his his action effectively is gone. And for Hogbite. I would just move a little bit up, offering a secondary target for the stun lancer if he wants to try. And we're not doing anything with that action, we're just ending the turn. That's nasty. Taste for six. Good, we're seeing reinforcements coming, of course, because this here is not bad enough. Revive protocol. Healing up. And we have only one action. Cool. Good, Roby moves up. We need to get that Lancer down. Thanks to tail and rounds that worked out well. Let's get the VIP out of here. kill and since we have death from above we're finally reloading all right moving up and let's teach him a lesson No more shenanigans here. That was a hard fight against him. Really, really tough. Inappropriate Murphy. Bit close. Cutting it close. We're having two more turns. And I think... Inappropriate Murphy just needs to run. People a break after taking down that chosen commander. I doubt it'll be long before we see that thing again, though. All right, Molly moves out, and Dilly G just overwatches. It seems quite random that there is another major set of enemies just coming in at the very end.
unfortunately we can't really see from here. Good, so what's the place I can... What is the play? I can tell you what we need to do. We need to, like, move forward. So the play is... To essentially go to an extraction point very soon. Not enough time to also climb up. Just out of range. Oh, it's quite disappointing. We need to kill that brute because it can hit you unconscious and I don't have the time to collect anyone. We could face off from here. Let's try that. Good hit. Another solid one. And hopefully three kills. Two, not three, which is... Which is again unfortunate. Can't let the brute um, go rampage. Okay, we're parrying. And we're moving out here because next round everybody has to evac. Think about that one round which we saved by if you say so. by running and gunning and reloading. Of course you could make the argument you could make the argument that that uh, that there were too many uh, variables afterwards. And we would have gotten out uh, anyways, but this here was cutting it as close as it gets. Bolt into his stupid face. Good. We're just getting out of here. I don't know if that was a good mission or not. We lost uh, the spark. We were just non-stop fighting. It felt like more than 40 enemies. <laughs> Rating good. Five uh, heavy injury, uh, injuries and one loss. It seems to me as if that mission was uh, almost destined to fail. 40 enemies within originally 12 turns turn timer. If we wouldn't have uh, recklessly engaged into the warlock and just uh, went through that, that would have not been enough. And keep in mind the 40 enemies do not include the 4 or 5 waves of... Um, of uh, spectral zombies and the two waves of uh, spectral army 
So that would be 26 additional enemies and that sounds more like it. Uh, so something in the order of 75 enemies. Unlucky, we lost the spark. But this campaign is one of hardship and losses. I'm quite happy that we had at least five uh, people uh, come back. That's a great uh, loss of uh, material. Oh, now I do understand why he did not have uh, Bladestorm, because he actually did not have Bladestorm. Maybe the shield is better than I gave it credit for. We just need to need to move faster. All right, uh, reflect kind of goes without saying. Oh, nice fortress. Ooh, very nice. Fire poison, explosive damage, everything's immune. Great. I think reflect is important and I also want to go into deep focus. Kind of have a soft spot for Hogbite. I don't know what it is, but uh, he is such a great character. So we're going to, uh, to take him. I think he will be one of the few that at the end can actually tank a few of the end game enemies. And I want to make sure that we're getting there. The reflect deflect uh, combo is super strong. Inappropriate Murphy and Roby. See, Hogbite was not taking anything from Inappropriate Murphy. Well, there you go. New Bond, congratulations. And Inappropriate Murphy finally gets threat assessment, also well needed. Salvo here for action economy. Euler finally can lop a grenade and then afterwards clean everything up by himself. Got a scope on top of it, which is good. And an engineer. Plus intel. Good, so the engineer, let's put her here. The list of fallen grows longer and longer and longer. Rip Spark. So my friend Stanford is out there in the wilds for twenty years. Damn it. Trying to scrape together this That is a great reward. I think we're going to catch it. Six days. Or we can make contact. Let's first make contact. That also gives us integrated warfare and afterwards we're going to get the cave. I wonder, by the way, what happened to the Snake King, because we have beaten him three times, but he always escaped. And I continue taking I continue taking that Frost Grenade with us. In the hopes of actually meeting that guy once and for all. But apparently that's not happening. Good. We got a new facility and yet another ruler. We're having four facilities and four rulers. Something's awkward. Something's awkward. Like... Um, No, we actually have three facilities and three rulers. No, we do have four. So there is the Berserker Queen here. And another one here. Did they put the, um, the Viper King simply back? 
because we weren't able to kill him three times uh, after three times that would be a, a really poor implementation of that regeneration mod Maximum power consumption reached. good five more energy thank you exposed power coil we could get through that and shadow chamber would be good but we have so many other good uh, things that we currently could do i would rather upgrade equipment than build the shadow chamber because we're not any we're, we're nowhere near um getting uh, to the end so might as well finish that and then afterwards we're continuing excavations we had some wounded soldiers cool we even got a promotion right here Good. Bomb squad. Experimental grenade and heavy weapons complete instantly. That is good. I like it. And we have a promoted soldier. I like that as well. Now, lots and lots of new missions. Breakthrough research is good. But spare parts is, is really not that good. There is a promotion here. Which we could take. That's a nice reward. And it would get one of our majors uh, to uh, and bring uh, bring them up to uh, colonel rank. We could use Euler as an example, who just uh, just had been uh, promoted. So that definitely would be an option. I like it. Another promotion here, 10 days. That is fantastic. We're going to take this one. It will keep us in the game so much longer. It's one of the best resistance orders. Yeah, not, not even a question. Like That is absolutely fantastic. Dodge plus five. Look, that's all fine and good, but this year this here is the absolute shit it is good hacking plus three let shinrod and lyrical do that because we they both of them could uh, use um a little bit of experience squatties at this point in the campaign would be hard to stomach and ataxia gets promoted field medic thank you great so proud of the prime team here we're slowly but surely getting to colonel which will be helpful because I think we will need an A team to get ourselves out of difficult situations. All right, excavating and excavating. I don't think that we should spend supplies for anything other than upgrades now. Um, the Celestial Gauntlet would be good. That's 240. Yeah, and the mechs, unfortunately. I can't build them at the moment. Um, we don't have a spark. We had a couple of spark upgrades, but that is irrelevant as we're not having as we're not having enough um, options here. We could go for one war suit though, or a wrath suit, which actually is also a good alternative. 
But I think taking a war suit uh, would be helpful and then slowly but surely getting into experimental heavy weapons. This here is needed for the super heavy um, for the super heavy explosives. So might as well do that now to get it out of the way. Which almost depletes all of our uh, reserves. We have enough for one more blue screen rounds if needed or something similar. Good. All PCS effects are now improved. That's great. The only problem is we don't have a lot of PCSs, but we'll hopefully fix that. We need Alarium because the upgrades of the next weapon tier will cost a lot of Alarium. So this here is exactly what we need at the moment. Take the device. Uh, mm. Let me shortly think about that. Yeah, we potentially need to do that. Gives us a lot of intel, but will be a pain in the in the neck uh, to get through the transmitter. Feral hive. Oh, and the hunt. Psionic hunting squads have been spotted in the area. It's great to see that you're not only running like with one side trip. You're always having like five. And that's helpful. Peter Van Dyke, uh, he was an XCOM uh, 1 Ranger. I think he was a colonel of the UN UNO. And then he got uh, degraded to a squaddy as he then joined XCOM. Well done. You, you're, no, he was not a colonel. He was a general of uh, the UNO, uh, UNO uh, peacekeeping forces. But as we've learned in the... Uh, um, rookie uh, run ranks don't mean much in XCOM so loyalty among thieves that's not necessary to counter this one here is really necessary to counter so we should go with operation winter strike next but that will happen the next time guys for now if you don't want to end up like Peter van Dyke uh, and get all of your privileges of this channel stripped uh, then uh, I suggest you click onto that like button and make sure uh, that XCOM stays healthy in the YouTube algorithm. Thanks for the support guys and see you the next time. Bye bye.